Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm John Brown and this is my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for all the comments on my previous video regarding guitar history and current collection. It was really inspiring to read all your comments about previous guitars that you had, where you come from and where you are now. So thank you very much for commenting on that video. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about a similar thing, but this time I'm gonna do it with amps and modelers. What I've been through in the past and what I have now. So the first guitar amplifier that I ever had was a Marshall G10. 10 watt, absolutely terrible practice amp. Had three controls on the front and a switch to go between clean and distortion. The controls control drive, volume, and tone. And this is the amp that I got with my Westfield guitar, my first ever guitar. And it served me well for many years. I had it when I lived in Sweden. I, uh, when I used to live in Manchester was when I first got it. I got it from Johnny Roadhouse Music back in the day when I was about 13, 14 years old. Later on, I ended up trading this amp for a Hona Panther, which I thought was gonna be infinitely better because it had more controls on the front, but truly it was also a terrible amp. And I used to boost this with a Nobles Overdrive pedal. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that company, Nobles late 90s, early 2000s. You could practically find them anywhere in local guitar shops. I think they're made in Germany. So I boosted it with this overdrive and it, I thought it sounded great having the gain up full on the amp and then the overdrive pedal with the gain up full as well. But truly a terrible amp. So now we get to the Christmas when I was 14 years old and I saw an amplifier in my local guitar shop called Bedroom Music, which was in Amptill, um, which is halfway between Bedford and Luton and there was a Marshall G30 in there that had two channels, independent EQ on both channels, and I thought I was the dog's bollocks when I bought this amp. So this was like my first proper guitar amplifier, what I thought was a fairly decent sound at the time, but probably again, truly awful. So after I got my Marshall G30, um, I also got bought a Zoom GFX 707 effects processor. And I heard my friend Mark's when he got his for Christmas that year and I really, really wanted one. I thought it sounded absolutely amazing. I told my parents that I would never need another guitar effects processor ever because it was just so good. <laughs> that thing was great for the time. Uh, there were some cool sounds in it. And eventually I got bought by my mother a PV Envoy, which again, I think was a 40 watt amplifier, which was part of the TransTube PV range. Um, it wasn't one of the older ones, it was one of the, the, the newer ones at the time, and I guess this was probably around 2002, um, 2003, some, some point like that. Um, and I thought it sounded really good, you know, I, I actually quite liked the sound of those PV Transtube amps. And I eventually sold that and bought the PV Bandit, which was the 100 watt version, its bigger brother, which was the fourth amp that I had. Just after this, I got my first ever modeler. I picked up a Pod Pro 1.0. And this is the unit that I swapped for my Ibanez 7420 at Machine Head Music. And that was my introduction to Line 6, and I've actually been using Line 6 products ever since. So that was in 2003, or 2004, was it 2004? No, it would have been 2003. And at the time, that thing was like the best thing. This was like the newest thing to come out. It sounds absolutely amazing and I really, really enjoyed that rack processor. And I still have the, the Pod X team now, um, just to prove how I absolutely love the technology of the Pod. So I ended up selling the PV Bandit and I picked up a Marshall 9100 power amp. 9100, 9100, basically stereo 250 watt aside power amplifier to power the Pod. I really, really liked how this power amp sounded. I thought it added a lot of warmth to the Pod, which was in a digital realm but it sounded really good with other things as well. And I'm guided that I sold it, but I'll tell you why I sold it in uh, a minute after the next amp. So I ended up picking up a Laney AOR ProTube 100 watt head from a friend for like 120 pounds. And this amp was really, really cool. It's basically a boosted JCM 800 and it sounded really big, it sounded really fat. And I really, really miss this amp actually. That's one of those amps that I really regret selling. But I ended up selling the Laney and the Marshall 9100 and the Pod Pro so that I could get my first proper brand new amp. The first amplifier that I ever got was actually on Blowout, I think at Toman or Music Store, I can't remember which one. But I got the Engel Savage Special Edition and they just discontinued this head. 
So they were blowing them out really cheap and I picked one up and I used this for the first few years of Fell Silent. I really, really enjoyed how this amp sounded. It was really, really dry, uh, especially on channel three. It got me to love that Engel sound. Eventually I sold this and picked up an Engel Invader 100 head. The Engel Invader had just come out. I was so stoked to try this amp that I even bought it without even trying it. So it was definitely, you know, it was risky to do that, but it just, I was just so excited by how it looked that I had to get one and I absolutely love this amp. I can control it all via MIDI, so now I wouldn't have to tap dance around on stage. I used it in conjunction with um, a Digitech 2120, as well as what I bought next. So I also bought the same year, I think maybe a month after buying the Engel Invader, I picked up my Line 6 Pod XT Pro, which I still have today. It's sat in the rack behind me. And I've had that since 2007, so I've had it coming up to 11 years now, and it still works absolutely great. So I had the Engel Invader 100 for all my dirty sounds. I had the Pod XT Pro for all of my clean sounds, and I could control it all via MIDI with the Behringer FCB 1010, which I actually still have as well. With the Digitech uh, going through the amp for any effects to my lead channel, or if I wanted a different kind of clean sound. So this was an absolute monster rig, coupled with the Engel 4x12 cab and it was just an awesome setup. And I had this for a very long time, even used it in the beginning of Monuments back in 2010 and 2011. So I ended up selling the Engel Invader around 2011. So I had it about three, three years or so at this point, uh, three or four years. Uh, unfortunately to pay the rent at the time, um, I just got back from being on tour periphery and uh, didn't really have much money, so unfortunately something had to give and I sold the Engel Invader. But then a friend of mine lent me his Engel. So then I, um, by Phil actually, the guy that I bought my Ibanez 7620 from, uh, lent me his Savage 120. And I absolutely love this amp. This amp was amazing as well. The problem that I always had with Engel is they always sounded weird when you put a mic in front of them. It sounded like there was four channels playing at once. So you had a clean sound, your crunch channel and then your lead channel all playing at the same time and I could never really get away from it which is why I actually ended up moving away from Engel. So next up I got a Laney Ironheart 120. From what I hear the amp is based off um, an original 5150 but with little changes here and there and this amp sounded great. I had the IRT 120, the IRT 15 which was the rack mount 15 watt amp with EL84s in it which was perfect for like travel gigs and stuff like that because you could literally just put it in a suitcase and it would go with you anywhere in two unit wrap. After this I ended up getting endorsed to Mesa Boogie so I ended up selling these amps off um, which is a shame really because I do miss them but I did end up picking up another Laney later on just because I missed the Laney sound so much. So then I got endorsed to Mesa Boogie um, around 2014. It was uh, just before we went on tour with Devin Townsend. And I've always been a huge fan of the Dual Rectifier. It was one of those amps where in the early 2000s, it was like the amp to have. It's just such a cool, iconic sound. You know, if you listen to Limp Bizkit, um, Significant Other, or Chocolate Starfish, and that is the sound of a Dual Rectifier, and it just sounds pissed off. So I've wanted a Dual Rectifier since then, and I eventually managed to get one in 2014. So I have two Dual Rectifiers in the United States with 4x12 cabs. And currently here I have two, two, two TC50 amplifiers, one rack mount, one in head format. And I've got the Rectifier preamp, which I plan on getting a 290 with because the Rectifier preamp into a 290 is basically the best sound in dual rectifier you'll ever hear. And I'm really, and that's probably the rig that I'm gonna take on tour with me next time because I think that combination just sounds so unbelievably huge and I can't wait to see what that sounds like in a live scenario. After getting the Mesa endorsement, I bought a couple of amps just for the studio here as well. A couple of them I still have and uh, a couple of them I don't. So uh, I had a dual rectifier by Mesa, which unfortunately I, I sold, uh, mainly because I got the Recto preamp and with the 290, I thought it was a better sound than dual rectifier anyway. I also had a PV6505 Mark One. I'm not the biggest fan of how a 6505 slash a 5150 feels but I think they sound awesome. So um, unfortunately I sold that as well just because I didn't really like it. But I thought it sounded awesome when other people play through it. So I'll probably end up picking up an original 5150 block layer at some point just to have it, you know, the cool amp. 
And then I picked up a Laney VH100R, which is a four channel monster from Laney. It's basically a JCM 800 on crack. So it's really good for lead sounds. It's got a really good clean channel. The rhythm channel is quite rocky and big sounding and God damn that amp is loud. I don't play that out live. I literally have it here for anything that I want to reamp that I think that that sound would work well for, but a really, really great sounding amp. I also have the Mesa Boogie TC50 here, uh, two of them. I have a rack mount one and a head format one. I've got one with six L6s in it and one with EL34s in it. And yeah, it's a really, really great sounding amp. I'm really excited to try the TC100 because the TC100 is the first amp that I tried by Mesa for the Triple Crown um, and it was the prototype and I thought it sounded absolutely incredible. So I'm really excited to try the 100 watt version. Just as I sold the Laney gear, um, I, pick, I, I got the chance to pick up a Line 6 Helix, which is the newest modeler from Line 6. And this modeler sounds absolutely amazing. You know, it's just another thing in my arsenal that I can use um, to make really, really good guitar sounds. Um, I use this unit live and I use it in conjunction with my Mesa gear. I use the Mesa gear through cabs for my distortion and then use the Helix for the clean sounds. And then eventually I'm gonna add the effects to through the amp for any lead sounds and stuff like that. Um, it's just a case of programming it all, which is something that I'm not got around to doing yet. As far as cabs go, what I have in my collection right now, I have a Mesa 4x12 oversized cab, which I use for miking up everything pretty much. I have a Hughes & Kettner 2x12 with vintage 30s in it, which is, you know, for the smaller kind of tighter sounding rhythm tracks that I want to create. It's a really good sounding cab. I have a VHT um, 1x12 cab, which I picked up brand new for 40 quid because the, the company were just trying to get rid of them because they had so many in the warehouse. And that thing is awesome as well. It's, you know, if you've ever played a VHT, VHT has this really tight sound to it, very, very dry. And the 1x12 really translates that as well. And it's really good for, if you want a mic further away, then you don't get any phasing problems between any of the speakers and it makes it just basically easier. But I really like 1x12s for like lead guitars um, and stuff like that. I also have a Laney 1x12 as well, which is a, a really, really cool cab. Um, it's very, very different sound into the VHT. It's a bit messier, if that makes sense. But that's a really, really good cab for the similar application as the VHT as well. So there you have it. There's all my previous amps and my current collection of amps. If you want to list the amps that you've had, what modelers you've had in the past, then please do so in the comments section. I'm also going to be doing a Q&A in the future as well. So if you have any questions that you want to direct to me, just list them in the comments section, I'll save them. And then when I do a QA and a in a few weeks, I'll make sure that your question's answered. Thank you very much for listening. I'm John Brown and I'll see you in the very near future with some reviews of products that I have currently in my home that I think are gonna blow you away. Peace out.